Hey, I'm Nathaniel Foss and I'm an archaeologist. I have been for over 10 years and this channel is dedicated to the archaeology of North America, primarily in the region that we call the Eastern Woodlands, focusing almost exclusively on the period prior to colonization. So in previous videos, I've talked a lot about the late Pleistocene, what's going on with what we call the Clovis culture and some of the pre-Clovis predecessors to the Clovis culture. But now I want to talk a little bit about some of their descendants. The Dalton phase is a particular archaeological, cultural, technological complex like Clovis that follows the Clovis complex and represents really the last paleo complex that we have prior to the transition to the archaic period. And in fact, there are so many similarities between the Dalton complex and later archaic cultures that some specialists in this field of research consider it to be more of an archaic tradition than a paleo tradition. But that's really more of an organizational question. It really doesn't affect too much how we do our analysis on these things. These people are responsible for the earliest cemetery that archaeology knows about in North America. I'm pretty familiar with this cultural complex because it's pretty ubiquitous. We find it all over the eastern woodlands and we see it in... It's, it's really the first culture that starts to systematically utilize uh, caves and rock shelters. In fact, the site that I did my master's research on, there was a very small residual uh, Dalton component at the very bottom of it. I've also spent, well, I spent all of this spring working on a site that had a pretty substantial Dalton component to it. Uh, which isn't surprising because I was working in the Dalton heartland of the Ozarks. The earliest form of Dalton shows up here in the Heartland region somewhere before 12,300 years ago. These earliest Daltons are extremely Clovis-like. They're lancelet, just like Clovis's are. They tend to have these fairly straight, slightly tapering sides where the basal element and the blade aren't clearly visibly distinct from each other. They just grade directly into each other. They tend to have an incurvate base to them. But that's about it. The only thing that's really missing from them to make them Clovis-like is that central flute scar that is diagnostic of Clovis. That and the fact that these are taking place after Clovis is over and those flute scars don't really resurface again in the, in the uh, Dalton complex. They're basically thinned and some of those basal thinning flakes run fairly far up the center of the, the blade, but it's not this like single removal episode that's set up and is systematically done like we see in the Clovis technological tradition. Some things start to change in the heartland somewhere around uh, probably about 12,200 years ago. The nappers start using a unifacial resharpening technique, which basically means that the blade is going to have this characteristic twist to it as it moves from the shoulder of the blade towards the tip. And for a long time, it was hypothesized that this caused the spear to spin in the air that would stabilize its flight path a little bit. Same concept as rifling in a bullet or a spiral when throwing a football. But this hypothesis was disproven by Devin Pettigrew and some of his colleagues back in 2015. What they found was that it doesn't cause it to rifle in the air. It doesn't cause that spinning, torquing motion in the air to stabilize the flight path. What it does do is start to spin when it impacts flesh or fleshy material, which is going to leave this spinning, spiraling, almost corkscrew-like puncture wound in an animal that gets hit by one of these spear points. But that's not the primary logic behind this beveled retouch strategy. Beveled retouching removes less material and allows you to resharpen the tool without exhausting the point into nothingness after fairly few. By doing a beveled retouch, you get to resharpen the tool more times so you don't have to discard the point earlier than you would. It, it expands the use life of these tools. And these use lives are expand expanded so far that many of them are reworked into drill bits at the very end of their use lives before being discarded. The other major change is that we start to see a distinct difference between the 
sections of these spear points. There's a haft element and a blade element that are visibly distinct compared to the older you know, Clovis and early Dalton points where the haft element grades directly into the blade with only some basal grinding to uh, differentiate the two. And it's this suite of traits that gets spread outside of the Heartland region into the Southeast, the Midwest, and even down into the Texas Gulf region, uh, where we see things like uh, San Patrice points or Hardaway Daltons. And these modifications are, are observed outside of the Heartland no later than about 12,000 years ago. So we're really only talking about so, like our time scale on Dalton is actually fairly short. If you notice, we've only we're only talking about about three hundred years between the onset of Dalton and its spread into the entire eastern woodland region. It's not all about the spear points, though. Dalton is really about a group of people that are modifying their technological tradition to accommodate for and and really intensively utilize this newly growing forest environment, these mixed hardwood forests that are coming up at the onset of the Holocene. The megafauna are gone, these tree species are fluorescing and going everywhere, and we start to see the first incidents of heavy woodworking tools, specifically the Dalton adze. Dalton adzes are made of chipped stone, like Burlington Church, just like the Dalton Spear Points are. They are, they tend to be between 10 and 15 centimeters long, and they have a D-shaped cross section. They have a, they're flat on one side and kind of humpbacked on the other. And we know that these are not digging tools because a tool like this that is being used to work the soil has a characteristic comet-shaped polish pattern to it. It looks like this. These have woodworking polish on them, especially in the high ridged areas that stick out from the surface of these tools. So thanks to Yerkes and Holdehoff's work, we know that these aren't digging tools. They're specifically woodworking tools. To quote them, it's significant that the oldest woodworking tool in the middle Mississippi Valley is an adze rather than an axe. Experiments and ethnohistorical accounts have shown that adzes are more versatile tools than axes. Axes and adzes can both be used to fell trees and split wood, but adzes can be used more effectively to hollow out logs. They also note that these Dalton adzes have charcoal residues on them, which is exactly what we would expect for a tool that's being used to make dugout canoes. If that's what people in the Heartland are using these tools for, then it is not surprising at all that their technological complex spreads out of this region so aggressively and so quickly. Because the Heartland region is situated right on top of the confluence of the Mississippi River with the Missouri, the Ohio, the Tennessee, and the Arkansas rivers. And this gives them a super highway that allows these Dalton making people to influence and be influenced by people up these river valleys. In the opinion of Holdehoff and Walthall, this expansion of the Dalton lithic tradition is the foundation on which all other eastern woodlands lithic traditions, at least in the southeast and the midwest, they're all built on this Dalton lithic tradition concept. It doesn't necessarily mean that people are invading these other regions. It really, it, it, all we really know is their technology seems to be having a really wide influence on people in surrounding regions particularly up those river valleys. Finally, I want to talk a little bit about the Sloan site. Sloan is located on a sandy hill in northeast Arkansas, and for 31 days back in 1974, Dan Morse's team excavated and identified human remains from 141 discrete locations on the hilltop. And some of these were buried, covered, and dressed in ochre, a uh, mineral pigment, basically, usually red or yellow. But more famously, 
these were buried with large numbers of grave goods. Some of these grave goods were very prosaic, things like the adzes or spear points. But one artifact stuck out from the rest of them. The Sloan spear point is what we call a hypertrophic Dalton. This thing is over seven inches long, more than two inches wide, and very, very thin. Too thin to have been a practical object. You can't hunt with this. It will shatter after a single throw. This seems to be a strictly ceremonial item buried with this dead ancestor. That's all I've got for this time. If you have questions or comments, you can, of course, leave those down below. I always look forward to reading them. And as always, thank you for watching.